Okay, one minute, please. Okay, um, good morning, everyone. Sorry for the little delay. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the class, BC 214. Let's take a moment to pray, and then we'll get started. Could somebody please pray with us, please? Thank you. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, so we started talking about lesson number five, six, the faculties of the human spirit. Let me just go ahead and share. Um, we started talking about the five spirit senses, and then we started talking about Less, uh, the ability to see in the spirit where God can communicate to us through this uh, through what we see I think we just came um, rather to the introduction of that part so let's start talking about um, seeing uh, with the eyes of our spirit so there are many different ways that uh, God communicates to us through what we see, right? So what we, what we normally have, uh, we use the term visions uh, in, in a very broad, broad way, a broad context. There are times when it's an, we can call it as an inward or an internal vision, right? That means you're not, you're not seeing into the spirit world. You're not seeing into the spirit world, but something is being shown to your spirit inside you. Right, so the eyes of your spirit are perceiving something. Okay, it's not it's not the same as an so one we would call as an open vision. When somebody says an open vision, there it's as though the eyes of our spirit is seeing through our natural eyes. It's as though right the eyes of our spirit seeing through the, our natural eyes something in the spiritual realm okay so now my example now my physical eyes are open i am seeing what is in the natural realm so imagine in the same way my spiritual eyes are open and i'm seeing in the natural realm that we would call as an open vision we call it a vision. So somebody says, I saw a vision. This is also this is a vision, but it's an open vision. You're seeing into the spiritual realm. But at the same time, the, if the eyes of your spirit, you're seeing something in your spirit, not in the spiritual realm, but in your spirit, like a picture. That also we say as a vision. That's also we say, we use the word vision. But it is something you have seen inside you, not in the spiritual realm. Your, the eyes of your spirit have seen a picture. And then, of course, that comes to your mind, and in your mind you process it. You understand, right? So when you see something in your spirit, uh, you see a picture. Uh, the Holy Spirit is giving you a vision. A visual in your spirit. 
you know sometimes it you know it could be a picture it could be even some actions happening things like that but it's given to you in your spirit okay or you may have an open vision right so for example uh, we've given a few examples at the bottom of page 22 seeing in the spirit realm the last point last bullet point there are some examples there is Elijah, uh, Elisha, and his son—not uh, his son, his servant, Gehazi. Okay. So, the servant says, he sees in the natural. He sees everywhere the armies, the enemy armies surrounded. And then God says, "Lord." Uh, then Elisha prays, "Lord, open his eyes." And then he's suddenly able to see into the spiritual realm. And he sees the heavenly host, the chariots. So that is what we will call as an open vision. That means you're seeing into the spiritual realm. Your eyes of your spirit is seeing in the spiritual realm. Or there's a time when Elijah, uh, Elisha again, his servant Gehazi went after Naaman. And you know, after Naaman had gone, so he was far away. Gehazi went and he said, Hey, Naaman, Naaman, you know, give me the clothes, money, etc. Because he made he gave a story, he took the thing. Elijah was sitting in his house. But he was able to see something so far away through the eyes of the spirit. But it was not just an inward way, it's like as though I'm there, I'm seeing what is happening. Right? So it's a, in the spirit. God is allowing him to go and see through the spirit, see what is happening in the natural. Right? So uh, you can see events happening in John chapter 1, 46 to 48. Sorry, uh, yeah, John 1, 46. You find an another example where Jesus is seeing through the spirit what happens under the fig tree. Right? So uh, when Philip goes to call Nathaniel, Jesus is far away. He's not in that place. But through the Spirit, he's seeing. He's through the Spirit, he's seeing what is happening in the natural realm, right? So that is, it's like an open vision, but you're seeing in the Spirit what's happening in the natural at that point or what just happened. So that's another experience of seeing. Um, there are pictures. Uh, as in Jeremiah's case, God says, Jeremiah, what do you see? So he's looking at a picture, right? He says, yeah, I see an, a branch of an almond tree. I see a pot that is with boiling water. It's facing north. I see these things. So what do you see? I see these things. Right? Um, so... This, this is another way of seeing something in the spiritual realm. Uh, there are visions. Um, that you can see that is. So Daniel seeing the angel Gabriel. Right. So that's an open vision. Daniel seeing things in the night while he's asleep. He says, I have in the night visions. That means. He's asleep. So we will call that as dreams. So he's asleep. And in that, he's seeing a lot of things. So a lot of the things in the book of Daniel happened as night visions. That means they were sleeping. We will call as dreams. Right? They were sleeping. And then he's seeing all this happening. So Nebuchadnezzar has that dream. Daniel seeing the thing. He wakes up. Oh, what is this? What is the meaning? You know. So that is also seeing but it's happening in the night while you're asleep so we call it dreams or sometimes we call it night visions okay so we have different kinds of uh, ways uh, different ways in which god helps our spirit to see okay now sometimes it may be very difficult to differentiate am i seeing in my spirit or am i seeing a spiritual vision it will be very difficult because 
we are processing with our natural minds a spiritual experience. So in your mind, you're thinking, huh, did I see it in my spirit? Or did I see in the spiritual realm? Some sometimes it might be difficult, right? But you process with your natural mind. So go ahead. Seeing in our spirit and also what seeing in spiritual. Okay, I, let me give try to give an example. So the question is, how do we? Uh, you want we want to differentiate between seeing in our spirit and seeing into the spiritual realm, which is we call open vision. So I would I would make this comparison. See, now I'm sitting here in the class. I'm seeing all of you. So if I see this, this I would call as an open vision. Like it's as though I am here and I'm in the same place I'm seeing. But suppose somebody took a picture of all of you sitting. They took a photograph or a picture. And that picture was given to me. Like I suppose I was sit sitting outside. And they gave me a picture from this place, this picture. Right? And they showed it to me there. I'm seeing that picture. It's exactly like this. But that I am seeing only a picture. I'm not in this room seeing. But it's the same. It will be the same. Like all of you are sitting here, color picture. I can see the color, you know, all that. I can see. If I'm sitting, if someone take a picture and give it to me outside, I'll see. So that is like an example where you're getting a picture inside you, in your spirit. But it's the same. I'll be able to tell, oh, yeah, there were one, two, three, four, five people uh, like this in the arrangement. It's a picture, but it's given to me in my spirit. Whereas sitting here and seeing all of you is like an open vision. That means it's like you are there in that realm and you're actually seeing what's happening. Two different. Oh, it doesn't, you know, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be present at the event. It's actually, it's the seeing, the visual is as though you are actually in that. But remember, it's, it's in the spiritual realm. That's open vision. So when the Lord Jesus appears to Paul, it's open vision. I mean, see his eyes are open, he's seeing that. And the Lord is telling him, Paul, don't be afraid. Yeah. So things like that. Um, So we need to, um, I mean, it may not always be possible to tell the difference. Sometimes you can tell, yeah, that's an open vision, that's a picture. Sometimes it may seem very similar. You may not always be able to tell the difference. Uh, so, And of course, dreams are obviously when you're asleep, right? When you're asleep, picture, God is giving you, maybe one picture, maybe a like a movie thing. But that's also God's giving you something for your spiritual eyes to see. Right? So uh, the important thing for us is to become sensitive uh, to this experience and become confident in it. That God is actually telling me something, revealing something. Sometimes you can see words. Sometimes he give you a Bible reference. Sometimes you know something from the scriptures come up, but you're becoming confident that God is speaking to me this way. Right? Um, we also see another example of traveling and seeing in a vision. It's almost like God is taking him and put, taking him to another place and showing him something far away. You know, it's like as though he's there. Right? Sometimes. Uh, we call this as an out-of-body experience, which is possible where 
the spirit goes that place and sees and comes back. I call it an out of body experience. Uh, I've never experienced it, but some people tell me, like they say, Oh, you came to me in the dream and you were speaking to me and you told me this. I never felt anything. I never, but I've had that happen many on several occasions. People come and tell me, You came to me in a dream and you were telling me like this, like this, like this. Uh, thank you. So, uh, I have no, I have no, nothing about that. But it's something, you know, God did it for them, uh, to minister to them. Uh, so I, I, I don't know how that works. But um, Ezekiel shares a lot of that kind of experience. You know, God took me and he took me there. So it's like the, some spiritually is being translated, taken to a different place. His body is in one location, spirit is in another location. So we call it by, by location, right? Body in one place there. Uh, and uh, he's seeing something there, then he comes back to his body. Uh, so Ezekiel, when you read all these references, uh, you find... Uh, so everything, you so find these experiences. It's very interesting when you look at you know, what you see in scripture. Many times, different prophets, like we are given the list of examples, here, Jeremiah, Amos, Zechariah, others, they say, God showed me, God showed me, God showed me. That means it's a picture, either of still picture or of vision. Uh, sometimes it's inside the spirit, sometimes the eyes are open to see. But the language is God showed me. Right? It's a vision. God is showing them a picture and communicating. Uh, the whole book of Revelation is what John saw in the spirit. Whole book of Revelation. So John is here. It's a spirit, powerful spiritual experience. His book. Bodies on earth. So Revelation 1, he says, I was caught up in the spirit. And then he's seeing all this. God is showing him in the spiritual realm uh, all of these things. It's very, very detailed. So the challenge, uh, let, let me just pause and see if there are any questions. Okay, let's go back. So the challenge is, first of all, for us to become used to this kind of, this way that God communicates with us, right? That God is actually speaking. Well, this is not normal. Right? It is normally we don't expect, but we should be open. Suddenly a picture is coming in your spirit. Or where is it coming from? Okay, God is giving me, God is telling me to do something. Sometimes you might see yourself doing something in that picture. That means God is telling you, I want you to do this. It's giving, he's giving that instruction to you as a picture in your spirit. So you go do it. It may be simple, like go talk to that person, or you know, go shake hands with that person, or Something, you know, it's just coming up in your spirit. God is telling you through that picture, through that vision, is giving you instruction. So first, our first challenge is being open to this way of God speaking. Sec then is how do we interpret and then how do we communicate that? Yeah, right? If there is a message or something, God wants us to tell somebody how do you that is the that is also a learning for us right so I just put down some simple guidelines this is not necessarily everything but if what you are seeing is literal you describe it if it is figurative interpret it so example if God shows you a picture like you're, you're looking at somebody and suddenly God shows you that somebody came and stabbed him at the back. Now, it could be literal, 
but it also could be figurative. So you need to differentiate God. Is it literal? Did literally somebody came and attacked him and you know hurt him? And maybe that person is suffering from that fear and that whatever, you know, of that literal thing. Or God, is this figurative? Figurative means it could mean somebody backstabbed him, somebody betrayed him. You know, somebody who was he was very he was trusting, they betrayed him. So that is a figurative meaning. So when you see some picture like that, you have to pray. I mean, you have to listen to God. Lord, is it literal? Is it figurative? Then you go to that person. And if you get the sense that this is figurative, you can say, hey, uh, I just, you know, God showed me, or I feel that maybe in your life, somebody betrayed you, somebody backstabbed you. So that not literally put a knife in you, the picture is that, but the meaning is somebody backstab. So you are still very hurt by that experience. And I, can I pray with you? God wants to heal you, something like that, right? But if God says, no, no, this man was actually attacked, that means it's a literal thing. Then you can say, hey, uh, I feel that, uh, you know, uh, God just showed me some, a vision, a picture that you were attacked. Somebody hurt you at the back. Then he might say, yeah, yeah, the scar is still there or wound is still there or something, you know. Uh, yeah, it actually happened. And he will then say, okay, uh, God wants to heal you physically and emotionally from that event. So that is one is physical, one is literal. So we have to interpret. God, what is God saying? Is it literal? Is it figurative? You know, uh, if it's literally say, describe it. If it's figurative, you interpret it. the interpretation. You have to learn how to do that. Okay, it takes a little bit of practice. So when you when we interpret, uh, always try to stay within the Bible. You know, like what does the Bible say? What is the Bible meaning? What does that represent in the Bible? Uh, don't use some other books like you know there, there are a lot of other books on you know what different symbols mean etc don't use that stay within the bible now what does the bible I, or listen to the holy spirit holy spirit will give you the meaning if it's a picture that's not necessarily in the bible okay listen holy spirit i'm seeing this what does that mean what is the meaning you are telling me okay but don't go and try to refer to outside books and things like that so stay within Thing. Sometimes God will give you Bible characters, incidents, or texts. So, you, example, you're seeing somebody, and uh, God suddenly reminds you about the incident of Joseph where he was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. And that's a Bible incident, but God is telling you by reminding of giving you that picture or that visual of Joseph being betrayed. This is what happened in his life. So God is using a biblical incident to tell you something about a person. Right? So God can do that also, right? So then you understand the meaning, oh, this person was betrayed or falsely, sorry, this person was falsely accused. And uh, something's happened in his life, so like that, you know, he can they can use biblical incidents, texts, and so on. So, and this is a, a few of the ways by which you know God can speak through pictures. He can give you pictures of things from the Bible and tell you to use that to minister to somebody. So even when you're praying for somebody, suddenly God will will quicken a, a character in the Bible or an incident in the Bible. As a picture in your in your spirit, and say that pray that for that person. You're with me, yeah. So visual, you know, speaking, something that comes up in your spirit, it may come as a dream. It could be an open vision. Uh, you could it, through the spirit see into the natural. You can be transported in the spirit to another location. All all kinds of things can happen where you are seeing into the spiritual realm and God is giving you information.
Let me just see the any questions. Any questions from our online students? You all with me so far? OK. So let's continue. Let's do one more today. So uh, what I want to encourage all of us is to practice this. I know some of you have already been practicing it, which is good. But just be open to it. It can happen anytime. God can speak to us anytime through visuals, through the eyes of our spirits. Second, through the second faculty of hearing. Right. So when we say hearing, it doesn't mean there always has to be sound. In the natural, yeah. There has to be sound. Only uh, we are using sound to communicate. But actually, this sound is carrying words to you. So, words that I'm speaking are being transmitted through sounds. But in the spiritual realm, Sound is not needed. So when words come to you, that is hearing. Words are coming to your spirit. That is hearing. OK? But without sound. Now, sometimes, sometimes, there are experiences we have seen, and we see in the Bible. It's like Samuel hearing a sound, or you know, people when the father said, "This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased." People heard that, so sometimes that happens. But many times, words are imparted to your spirit without sound. That is hearing. You're hearing in the spirit. Sometimes people even use the word knowing because that knowledge has come to your spirit. So our ears, our spiritual ears can hear, and uh, uh, the interesting thing is, in the spirit, it doesn't have to happen word by words. A whole paragraph, a whole book, a whole page can be imparted to your spirit. That means it's all of those words. All right, come, come. It's all of those words being imparted to your spirit at that moment. Right? So to hear in the spirit does not require, this, require the same process to hear in the natural. In the natural, it requires sound. And in the natural, it takes time. Like I have to say, one sentence after another sentence after another sentence. You have to listen to me for one hour. <laughs> Only then you're getting all the information. But in the spirit, that information can be given to you in a second. It's like God is uh, giving all those words to you uh, in an instant. Right? Sometimes it may come little by little. Sometimes it can just come. You know, fully as as a God giving you all those words right then and there. Okay, so hearing in the spirit, we must get used to this, right? Now, sometimes what happens is God wants us to take steps of faith. So you may hear a few words, then as you start engaging with those few words, more words will come. So maybe you're reading the Bible, and suddenly revelation is coming. It may come, maybe one thought, one idea, one insight begins. Then you get a hold of that, and then you continue to engage with, meditate on it, think about it, say, God, tell me more. God, I want to learn more. Then what happens? More and more of that 
revelation begins to come into your spirit right or you're ministering to somebody you start speaking to them right so you might speak one idea one thought to them and as you are talking to them god is giving you more more information to tell them to talk to them right so in the spirit you're also training yourself how to receive more of what god is saying to you more words so it's a part of training it's part of learning you know, train yourself that you can get more and more of the words that god is speaking to you right um yeah so sometimes a single word sometimes sentence sometimes there's more um so many of um, you know many of the instances that we see in the bible when people say or when the prophet said or in the new testament so, and say the word of the lord came to me so we ask how did the word of the lord come when a prophet says and the word of the lord came unto me saying how did it come i mean was god talking to you in a year you know was it coming like through a microphone you have a, a, in here and huh, hello jeremiah <laughs> now i want you to prophesy thus <laughs> You know, how did it come? He says, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, how did it come? What I can conclude, like, you know, I'm, I'm summarizing based on what we are seeing in scripture. It is through the spiritual faculty of hearing. That the words are coming into their spirit. Whether it's a sentence or a paragraph or lots of words, it's not like necessarily some aud audible voice they're always hearing, you know, da, 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 and then he's speaking, you know. No, it's coming into the spirit, that knowledge, that understanding, those words are given. And then they're acting or saying or speaking. Some instances, yeah, it's an audible voice, but most of the time, it's the inaudible communication of God to their spirit. Words are coming. Another thing to keep in mind about words is that God sometimes may speak only few words, but those few words have big consequences. He may give, speak one sentence, instruction, but that one sentence of instruction can have big consequences. Uh, we have this example uh, in Acts 8. The Holy Spirit is telling Philip, go join this chariot. So you see the instruction, very small, very simple. Go join this chariot. But something big is about to happen because inside the chariot, there is one Ethiopian. Uh, he is uh, working for the queen, very important man. He's having the scroll of Isaiah and he's already in Isaiah chapter 53. And uh, he's about to be saved. And if he gets saved, what's he going to do? He's going to take the gospel to Ethiopia. He's going to go and talk to the queen. But the Holy Spirit instruction is, go join this chariot. Very simple. He didn't tell Philip, Philip, uh, you know, go join this chariot. In the chariot, there is a man. He's the he's working for the queen. He has a scroll. He's in Isaiah 53. He did, Holy Spirit never told all that. Just said, go join this chariot. So many times, the instructions that God gives are simple. You know, we want very big. One simple instruction. But if you obey that instruction, something big can happen. You know, same thing in Acts 10, uh, Peter's praying on the rooftop and all that. And God's instruction to Peter is, Peter, three men are looking for you. Go with them. Don't ask any questions. What is the instruction? Three men are looking for you. Go with them. Don't doubt anything. Don't ask any questions. That's the instruction. He didn't say, Peter... Uh, these men have come from Cornelius's house. Cornelius is a Roman centurion. He's a very big man. 
you better wear your nice suit. Huh. None of those instructions. Just Peter, you go with them. Don't ask. Don't worry. Just go. Right? So like that, there are many, you know, we'll have many instructions. We see examples. Sometimes in the words, there are personal details. Like, you know, when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well of Samaria, he said, you know, you had, I don't know what, five husbands, a man you are now with, not your husband. Um, uh, in Acts 5, Peter says, you know, did you buy this land for so much money? So that was numbers were given. Names, uh, numbers, addresses, you know, um, go to this house, the street called Straight, and you'll find uh, there's a man, Paul, he's praying, and so on. So all those details are also given to us uh, through words, right? So we must get used to receiving words. Sometimes it's just a word, sometimes it's a sentence, sometimes it's more. Uh, and that then we need to engage with that revelation, engage with that. Do you need to give it to somebody else? Is it for you? What do you do? So on and so forth. Okay. Any questions on that? Online? All right. Go ahead. So, like, uh, when it comes to hearing, uh, so what are the like some steps that we can take in order to uh, like to acknowledge what we are having inside of us or what we are hearing? It's from God, but not our own thoughts. Like what we can measures that we can take in order to differentiate. Things. What we are hearing is from okay, okay. So the question is, how do I know? Uh, how do I check or verify, right, that what I'm hearing, like the words that are coming, are actually from God, or, uh, and they're not our own, right? So one is. Uh, uh, to that we should just be honest with ourselves like you know that this is from God, that I, I be honest with myself that I'm not making something up and that if I'm hearing a word it's coming from my spirit and not something I made up myself so one is just be honest internally you know be honest with yourself second uh, test would be as these words are coming in my spirit uh, do I feel peaceful? Do I feel the peace of the Holy Spirit? You know? Uh, do I sense, is there a sense of peace that, that is, the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with my spirit? Yeah. This is, I, I am speaking to you. you know, pay attention. Right? Uh, so the sense of peace. If I'm disturbed, confused, etc., then, you know, Okay, I, I, I will be careful with that. But there's a sense of peace. I know this, this is God speaking. There's a sense of peace in, with those words. Um, the other test, of course, is to make sure it's aligned to the word of God. right? So that whatever words are coming, it's not contradictory to the scriptures. It's not against uh, God's word. So we are careful about that. Uh, we are, we are, we, because the Holy Spirit will never say anything today that contradicts the written scriptures. So he's not going to tell you something today to do something that is against the word of God. Uh, so contradict. So that's it. So I think one is I'm being true to myself that I'm not making it up. I'm listening to the to my spirit, to the Holy Spirit speaking to me in my spirit. Second, there is the sense of peace. Uh, in my spirit, a sense of God's presence, uh, that this is, uh, you know, sometimes the sensing of peace or presence may be more, and other times it may be less. Sometimes you know this is, you know, there's an, uh, there's an awesome presence, so you know this is God. Uh, and the third is, yeah, you're checking with the Word of God. It doesn't mix, it doesn't contradict God's words, so you know that that is God speaking. 
And of course, uh, if we are going to release these words to somebody else, you always let them test it. Like you don't tell them, hey, I heard God, you have to believe this. No. No, uh, you always let them test it. If it's for somebody else, you're speaking it out prophetically or giving it to somebody, you always allow them to test what you've heard. Good. Any questions? So, two parts of our faculties, what we can see, what we can hear. So I want us to practice that, develop that. Uh, so you ask God, God, please show me. God, please speak to me. You ask him. There's nothing wrong in asking. Um, the Bible tells us to desire spiritual gifts and spiritual experiences. So I think I want to ask God, speak to me. God, show me. And then you listen. God shows you something. You act on it, speak it, share it. But we need to, that's that's one way of how we practice uh, developing the faculties of our spirits. Okay, so I think we will stop here. Just two simple thoughts. Um, we'll cover a little bit more next week, feeling uh, the other faculties uh, and so on. Okay? And uh, all right. So may I ask somebody to please pray? Oh, wait, there's a question here. Um, when someone asks us to pray for a suitable partner or an overseas or Indian job asking us to pray, to tell us if this is the right one or not, at times God tells us, sometimes he doesn't reveal, but we don't have the urge to tell them. Is it right for us to keep quiet? Should we pray and ask God to reveal them? Yeah, so generally, in situations like this, you know, it's always good. Uh, just to pray that God will speak to that person. Uh, be because we don't want to... get them to make a decision based on what we said. Uh, otherwise they'll turn around and blame us. You told me, you told me. So it's better that God speaks to them. So our first thing is, God, you speak to them, you guide them. And if God reveals something to you, you can tell them, see, this is what I feel God is saying, but you please check. You please pray, and you please make sure God speaks to you about it, right? So you can pray and say, uh, yeah, this, this person seems right for you, or yes, it seems right for you to take up this job, you know? You're praying, this is what you sense, you tell it to them, but your prayer is God speak to them, and even if God shows you something, you submit it to them saying, this is what I feel, you check and you pray and you see what God tells you. So that way, the final decision is always theirs. And they are encouraged to listen to God themselves. Yeah? Question? Master, uh, so once I had a dream, I had a dream that a small accident for a person like uh, one person is uh, having an uh, accident, met with an accident. I didn't pray. I was a completely new believer. So after some months, uh, the person had uh, had an accident, met with an accident. It, 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 it came into that point. It was like death and life. So when I f asked for forgiveness and I prayed, that person got healed. Like mm. whole body was like completely broken. So from that uh, point, I'm not able to come out that I may like be open up like that guilt that I may not be able to take the responsibility. And uh, till today, I'm not able to come out. Like, what is the, how to come out from that kind of situation? OK. So so, so that, that so you look back. Uh, now, so when God revealed that to you, of course, the, 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 the intent was that you could pray for that person, try and prevent that from happening. But anyway, that happened, and then you know you realized that. So one is you forgive yourself. God has forgiven you. From God's side, there's nothing more He needs to do. Now you have to forgive yourself. Right? You tell yourself, you know what? It's okay. I it I'm I was new to all this, right? 
I'm learning. So you forgive yourself, and then you open up and say, God, uh, uh, please continue to speak to me. Please continue to show me. And when you show me, I will try to act on it as soon as possible. So when God speaks to you, maybe through a dream or any other way, you act on it, you pray for it, or you do something with it. But the most important thing is you forgive yourself. You, you, you don't hold yourself responsible for it. Yeah. So we all make mistakes. You forgive it because God has forgiven you. You forgive yourself. And then you come before God and say, God, please continue speaking to me. I will be sure to act on what you tell me in the future. Yes, Prince. Sometimes when we have to receive it, necessary that we always share it with those persons. So the question is, when we have dreams, is it necessary we share it with the people who are in, whom you have it? Not necessary. Sometimes God shows you things about other people mainly just for you to pray for them. In fact, that will be the most often, right? That when God shows you a dream and you see some other people in it. And, the main thing, reason is God wants you to pray for them. God wants you to intervene in their lives through prayer. But there may be times He wants you to tell them. But you pray about it. So, Lord, do you? So, the thing is, God, I saw this, this people. Do you want me to tell them or do you just want me to pray for them? If you feel prompted that you need to tell them, then you go and tell them. Otherwise, just pray for them. Majority of the time, it would be just pray for them. Yeah, so you don't want to alarm them. God is just showing you to pray for them. All right. Okay, let's close in prayer. Uh, our time is almost up, and so. What's my okay? Go ahead, Prince. Give you glory for this time of. Learning, O oh Lord Father, that we had, uh, Lord, we pray that uh, you will help us, O oh Lord Father, to put into practice everything that you have taught us. Holy Spirit, God, we submit ourselves into your hands. You come and you take control over our lives and you lead us, O oh Lord Father, in your ways that you have for our lives, O oh Lord Father. Uh, whatever we have learned, O oh Lord Father, help us to steward it, help us to nurture it. And uh, you water it and uh, you help us to grow in your word and in your spirit, Lord. We submit everything to your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. God bless. We'll continue this next week.